Hello everyone, welcome to the uh, regex tutorial. Um, I'm happy you came here at first instead of the uh, just awful bash tutorial. Those, those losers who went there. Uh, I feel bad for them. Anyways, um, uh, we, we get to be the cool kids. We came here first, so let's look at this. We have this is the uh, regex page that we get from the handout, the CS252 handout, Lab 2. Um, and a regex, the basic idea of a regex is it's a pattern that we can use to describe any particular string that we want to uh, either find or check for the existence of or extract or anything like that. Now, egrep is a very powerful tool. We talk about it a bit in the Bash tutorial, and what it does is it can find these regexes inside of a file. Now, a regex can easily just be a word. That's fine. If you're just looking for one specific word, you can just write that word, and that is a proper regex for it. It'll do the job. Or, you can be a little more interesting. In this case, we are looking for uh, grep to find anything that has either a P or an H in it. Now, regexes can be a little different depending on uh, what program is using them. They're not 100% standardized. Um, egrep is pretty normal, except that in a lot of regex things, it would consider this to be an incomplete regex. This would just be one character, either a P or an H capital. In grep, it's going to be more relaxed. It's going to be using... Um, it's going to let you use these regexes in more of a uh, anything that fits it sort of way. In this case, the regex is just... Um, does it contain a P or an H? So, in this case, we put in Patty Farnsworth, and we put in a phone number, um, and we've got all this text here. Um, we're asking for just lines with a P and an H. Oh, it's a, okay, never mind. It's saying from this regex test. It's from this. Yeah. I did not read that carefully. That's fine. But it's just going to print out all the lines that have either a P or an H in it in this case. Uh, or we can do with 0 through 9. We can, instead of having uh, just P or H, we can say we want from one character to another character. Uh, ASCII-wise. We're using that with this dash, which is just going to be between those, so z anywhere between 0 and 9 will work. Um, we can do that, or lowercase letters. That works, it's alphanumeric. Uh, we could do this plus. Um, the plus sign is saying one or more. So it can have one of them, or it can have any number of them, but it can't have zero of them. Otherwise, it won't match and won't print out that line. Or we can do this dot star. That's just going to print out everything, because what dot is doing is saying um, uh, any character, and what star is doing is saying any number of these. So dot star is saying any number of any character. And let's print out the whole thing. Uh, but yeah, that's useful, and star is useful, and you'll see why. Um, zero, one, or more characters. And then we can do bigger ones here, like we have, um, in this case, we want to find some numbers, or in this case, a number, and then some number of letters, at least one and then a number. Um, yeah, just as it says there. A number followed by at least one or more lowercase letters followed by another number. And you can use all sorts of special characters too. Um, you can escape them using normal escape characters. Back references are useful. So these are going to, we'll probably talk about them a little more in shell. But you can use these when doing certain programmatic things. Um, 
to check back on old things or or to capture things to actually extract parts of a sentence or parts of a pattern um, in this case um, they want to match on a repeated pattern of two characters so they have capture group one and capture group two so a zero to nine number and then another zero to nine number and then we back reference to it like this and we can have our plus saying that we need zero or more of these so it's going to have these patterns of two numbers so in this case one two one two one two or two three two three two three so that's why back references can be useful and actually I think they will be useful in like the um, the password part of this because you need to do how many times you have a certain amount of numbers or whatever but anyways this whole part isn't the interesting part it's useful it has helpful tips and I would definitely go check it out again before you start on the lab but this regexer r e g e x r dot com is one of the best most useful websites you will find in your entire cs career it's not the most useful i would probably say you know obviously you can put your googles up there your google drive your whatever um youtube stack overflow all that i'd probably put draw.io up there too if you ever wanted to take a look at that it's diagrams and flowcharts and it's really good but this is a really really good regexing program so you can just make your regular expressions here and um check them against what it's doing and remember these are not 100 percent standardized though it does also have you can do which uh two different types just always mostly just stick with the javascript one it's pretty similar to anything you'll find um, and yeah, all this is doing is it's letting us test these regexes on the fly, and it makes life a lot easier. Example here, let's say we want to, and this is nice, this cheat sheet's awesome. Let's say we would like to capture, um, numbers. Let's say just numbers. Now we could do, uh, this backslash d though I don't think that grep handles that well I'd have to check grep does handle this though so we could do that that still captures all those numbers um, we can also capture uh, things that have multiple numbers so or one number or one or more zero or more um, we can even do one or zero um, and again you see it's highlighting these but there's spaces between them it's I wonder if it's possible to zoom into this in a way that's not going to look horribly ugly all right that's not horrible so yeah the space is between these because it's it's capturing each number individually but it isn't capturing um, the whole sequence unless I did something like that then it would uh, what if I want decimals I want it to capture a whole decimal value well we can go um, escape character period because remember period means a character of any type so let's escape that so it's actually talking about a period and we can put uh, more numbers after That doesn't work for this though, so we're going to change that. Awesome. But now we kind of had the problem that it's seeing this as two different numbers, which is actually not really a problem, because um, at least it's not trying to see this as one number. It's still seeing this as two numbers, which is about the best we can hope for. You know, you could put a space there. It's still going to see it as two separate numbers here. Um, how about double words? Let's do double words. So, um, obviously, you can just do, in that case, woot woot. 
the other thing you can do is we can talk about the back references. So let's say in this case um, A through Z. And that's our back reference or capture group as it calls it here, but we can treat it as a back reference. And then we have this. Um, we can put, what that? I'm going to look in my cheat sheet here. Um, does it not have, oh, non-capture groups are great too. If you just want parentheses around something, uh, not in literal parentheses where you'd use a, uh, escape, but like if you just want to put some parentheses in there, um, as like uh, order of operation style, you can use non-capture groups. Um, what was I thinking? Oh yeah, uh, back references. So back reference to one and back reference to one. So why isn't that working? Oh, I know why that's not working. Um, actually, I really don't know why that's not working. Oh, you know what it is working? It's just because I did, okay, yeah. The first one, and then the same thing we got from there. So that would be double letters. It's kept, got all those in there. Um, you know, if we want to do triple letters, then we can do something like, uh, and I believe, that would work? Yeah. So. Um, yeah, that's, that's basically it. That's, there's not too much more to go over, I think, as far as regexes go. Um, they're super useful, and they will not be over with this flap. We're going to have a lot more of them in CS252. Um, but just keep this website around, because it's really nice. Um, and yeah, that's all I have for today. Uh, go check out the Bash tutorial. Peace.